Today, uh, January 16, marks exactly one year investigative journalist with the Tiger PI team, Akbar Hussein Swale, was murdered. He was shot dead near his family home at Medina in Accra in what is believed to have been an assassination because of his work, which exposed widespread corruption. Hussein Swale grew up among eight siblings at uh, Wilensi in the northern region. The member of the Tiger IPI team exposed widespread corruption in the judiciary, uh, showing judges and court workers accepting bribes to influence cases. Its other expose was number 12, an investigation into corruption in football, which led to a lifetime ban of the former president of the Ghana Football Association, Kwesi Nyantechi. His murder uh, was a shock reverberating beyond the country's borders and drawing condemnation from several personalities and organizations. Uh, the president of the Ghana Journalists Association, uh, Roland Afe Moni, has called on the security agencies to intensify investigations into the death of the investigative journalist Ahmed uh, Swale. According to him, uh, Ahmed Swale's death is responsible for Ghana dropping on the Press Freedom Index. Meanwhile, the GJA president has urged journalists to sharpen their sense of security ahead of the election 2020. My colleague Posha Gabo is at the press centre where the GJA is marking one year of Ahmed Swale's death. And she's joining us live. Ahmed Swale was murdered in cold blood. A year on, the Ghana Journalist Association is marking his death. I have here with me the president of the Ghana Journalist Association, Roland Alfamoni, as well as Ahmed Swale's brother, Unus, and the DSP, Juliana Obenji, as the PRO of the police CID. I first begin with the brother of Ahmed Swale. A year on after his murder, are you disappointed that no one has been prosecuted? Surely, uh, I will say we are disappointed. So far, what has happened, we are dis really disappointed. Because we thought by now, uh, those behind the act will be arrested and uh, prosecuted. But that is not being done. We know in cases of this nature, it takes a longer time to unravel the truth. But if you look at other incidents that has happened, and they have taken sweet time to I mean, unravel the situation, we will feel that uh, either the security agency don't want to do it or uh, there's some pressure somewhere that is preventing them from doing what is expected of them. DSP Julian Obin, can you keep us up to speed to in with investigations so far? What is happening? People think the wheels of justice are grinding slowly. Well, thank you. I think that uh, when I came into the meeting, I didn't mention that uh, the Ghana Police Service is not and has never rested on this particular investigation. As I speak to you, investigators are still working on this issue. There are a lot of information that we have gathered, but unfortunately, like I said, it's not something that we can share at this moment. Apart from that, we have gotten lots of leads which we have paid particular attention to and followed to the latter. We only would just continue, like I said, inside there, encourage each and every one of us who has a um, timely, accurate unravel this, this mystery. Are you satisfied with her answer? <laughs> not, not, uh, not, not that we want it. Because uh, I know and I tell you, they also know that they have uh, uh, security appliances where they have synchronized the whole Accra into it. And a click of it will show all the activities in Accra. I, and I believe that with that one, they, could, they can use it within 24 hours to arrest those behind the act. But they are simply not doing it. Why is it that when the incident happened at uh, Kaswa Bujumbura camp, it took them three days to arrest those people? Why, why is this so? And why is this one taking them a longer time? Is it that uh, people or citizens of this country are being treated as first, second and third class citizens? No, it shouldn't be so. We are all citizens. We are all taxpayers. Why is it that if an incident happened to some people, it takes longer time for them to I mean, unravel the truth. And when it's, when it's happened to other people, it doesn't take them time. Roland Alfilmone is president of the Ghana Journalist Association. Ahmed Swale was murdered a year ago. Is he just going to be a mere statistic of journalists that have been killed? What are we doing? We are obliged to pursue this case. 
um, from the standpoint of our constitutional mandate as the Ambala body of journalists in Ghana, from the standpoint of godliness, because um, this is an issue which should not be swept under the carpet, and we will not flinch from saying whatever we ought to say, from doing whatever we ought to do, and um, knocking at doors, rallying our international uh, partners, local partners, to ensure that justice is done and manifestly done in this case. We don't doubt the competence and capacity of the Ghana police and the security apparatus as a whole in unraveling and dealing surgically with the perpetrators of this murder. Um, as my brother cited, within days they were able to unravel the circumstances of a cinema murderous incident. So we can only summon hope and pray that in the case of Ahmed Swale, the perpetrators will be exposed as soon as possible for them to face justice. We also believe that uh, what the president said, the assurance he gave that the killers of Ahmed Swale will be found um, is not a mere rhetoric or empty platitude. It is some, uh, com coming from where he is as a human rights lawyer and, 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 and a president someone who occupied the most consequential position in Ghana, who, someone who has access to all the intelligence uh, information in this country. I believe that um, the killers will be found and justice will be done for all of us because <coughs> this incident has a tendency to exert a chilling effect on press freedom and, 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 and the freedom of expression. A year on, our journalists safer because you did even ask us to safeguard our security ahead of the 2020 elections. The circumstances, the tragic circumstances under which Ahmed Swale was killed and the fact that no one has been arrested and prosecuted up to today do not obscure the fact that uh, Ghana is largely free as far as the practice of Fred press freedom is concerned. And the empirical evidence is a position on the league table of free media systems in Ghana. The, it took the murder of Ahmed Swale to dislodge us from our top position to the third in Africa and our 23rd globally to 27. So this shows that even though we have slept, again, Ghana is still to a very large extent free to practice journalism. But we should not lose guard. We should not be complacent. We should always be mindful of the fact that danger to our security still looms large. And so this reinforces the need for all journalists to avoid areas and practices which will impair their lives or endanger their security. Thank you very much for your time. And I've been speaking with the president of the Ghana Journalist Association, Roland Alfilmoni, as well as Alhassan Unis, brother of the late Ahmed Swale, and DSP Juliana Obenshe as the PRO of the police CID. There is certainly a concerted effort that all of us must put together to ensure that no journalist should be killed in Ghana. Again, from the press center, Porsche Gabo, TV3 News, Accra. Well, the International Federation of Journalists has sent a solidarity message to the GJ indicating its readiness to support any further actions required in demanding justice. It uh, indicated that the assassination of Ahmed Suwali cannot be allowed to become just another statistics in the grim toll of journalists killed and the impunity for the assassins. It further expresses regret over the failure to properly investigate uh, to prosecute the killers, uh, which emboldens those who seek to silence journalists and deny citizens the right to free and independent information. Let's quickly get on to the telephone lines. Uh, Latif Abubakar is a spokesperson for Tiger IPI. He joins us now. Uh, good afternoon, sir, and thank you very much. One year on, uh, what has your organization been told about investigations or the progress of it? Currently, we don't have any information. So we are also in the dark. We have the media mm. and then the family too as well.
and uh, we want to find out whether there are specific things you have done in perhaps seeking to find those behind the killing? Yeah, um, for, for us, I mean, one of the best things we could do is to cooperate with the security agencies and then the fact that all the information we had, we've been able to provide those information to the security agencies. For instance, we, we had an audio recording uh, of threats on Ahmed Swali before his death and uh, we provided those audio recordings to the relevant security agencies. So um, from our side, we, we've cooperated well, given that the, the security agencies, the needed information we have uncovered. And mm. we expect to hear from them, but it's been a while. We are yet to. We will pray we hear from them. So, mm. But how expectant are you uh, that the, the killers, those behind the killing of Ahmed Swali, will be found uh, by investigations uh, and justice? Uh, done. I, I, I think that we, we actually had uh, so much trust and faith in our security agencies. We, we just couldn't believe it's taken even a year and nothing has been done. That, that's what surprises us. And uh, the fact that we, we don't get any information, the family is not getting any information, and what is also really, mm. really amazing is as to whether there is progress or we are still where we are. Mm. It's, it's the police that can really answer that question. But um, we uh, advise him that if the relevant security agencies are thinking uh, it's a tough task to undertake, there are a lot of international organizations with expertise who would love to come on board to support them. They should just come out, open their arms wide, and then call for help. And I'm sure people will be willing to come on board to help and find the killers. Mm. And uh, we, we just heard a statement from the International Federation of Journalists asking for the investigations to be expedited. I want to find out whether your outfit feels the same about it and that you get the sense that investigations are delaying pretty much. Yes, at least we, we also have get a sense that the, the investigations are delaying, that the process is too slow and... Uh, we're hoping and praying that, uh, I mean, the, the process will be expedited as quick as possible. Um, for us, it, it makes, not just uh, for us and then the family, it makes us feel nothing is being done. Unfortunately, uh, maybe the security agents are actually doing so much, but because we are left in the dark and we don't have any information, we, we, we actually are feeling like nothing is right. being done so far. Right. That is why I, we keep saying that if they are having any challenges or difficulties, we plead that they open their arms wide for other investigative bodies with expertise to come on board to right. support them in this agenda. Right. Uh, Ms. Abu Bakar, we're grateful for your time. Thank you very much. Uh, this must be a very difficult no, moment for the family and work colleagues of Ahmed Suali, who was uh, murdered in cold blood for just doing his job as a journalist.